Hey everybody, it's Peter. I'm here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, and instead of reviewing motorcycles, I'm going to use two people with me. So I've got Seth with me and Chelsea, and we're going to talk about high revving engines, because you guys have had questions in the comments about those, and I'm going to prove to you that a high revving engine actually has, or can have, slower moving cylinders than a low revving engine, and we're going to talk a little bit more about cylinders and how engines work and engine sizes, and these two are going to represent the inside of an engine for us. Should be fun. Let's see how it goes. So when we talk about revolutions per minute or high revving engines, we need to talk about cylinders and engine size and that kind of thing. So I'm going to use this to represent the cylinder inside an engine. So the way you get the engine size, like I have a 950cc motorcycle sitting just off screen here, is you have a cylinder and the diameter of the cylinder, which is the distance across here, is one measurement. It's done in millimeters, it's all over the Kawasaki website. And then it's also the stroke, which is how far it, it goes up and down. So they call that bore and stroke. Bore, thinking like boring a tunnel, uh, the width across, and stroke, how far it goes. So the way you get an engine measurement is how much it displaces. So a 950cc engine with four cylinders is going to have four cylinders displacing 948 cc's, cubic centimeters. Basically, you can make an engine bigger by making the bore larger, which is the wider cylinder, or you can make an engine larger by making the stroke longer. So here's where things get complicated, and this is where these two are going to help me out, and this could get entertaining. Let's talk about what they're going to do right now. All right, so representing a big bore engine is Seth. I don't know why I represent, you chose him to represent big bore, but that's what we're doing. And a smaller engine would be Chelsea here. So Chelsea is going to use her fingertips to, relative, to, to show what cylinder heads do, and you are going to do what? You're going to use the backs of your hands. So let's go a little closer to the camera, just climb up over here. You can see that uh, Seth's hands are quite large, and your revolution per minute, so one revolution is all the way down, and all the way back up. So you're going to come back over here to the wall. Chelsea's going to come with me closer to the camera. She's going to put her hand roughly in here. Chelsea has much nicer hands than all of us. And she's got a four cylinder engine, so she's got four fingers. And your one revolution is going to be finger down, finger up. So if you look at a small uh, engine like a four cylinder and just like run your engine sort of like this. And Seth, you run how your engine's going to work. So Seth's engine like that, Chelsea's engine like that. All right, head back to your spots. So let's think about it for a second. If Seth is representing a large cylinder traveling a long ways, and you're representing smaller cylinders traveling smaller distance, obviously this can be a higher revving engine. So if Chelsea comes out front here, and we go, put your hand over here, let's go, that'll work. So Chelsea's just gonna use one finger this time, and she's gonna move her finger down and up and down and up. Now Seth is going to match that, down, and up, and down, and up. So every time you go down and up, that's gonna represent one revolution. So as you can tell, I'm guessing that Chelsea can do three revolutions by the time you can do one. So you're gonna do a revolution as quickly as you possibly can. Chelsea's gonna get her hand out there by the camera. I'm just gonna make sure it's on camera. All right, so I'm gonna to count to three. And you're going to try to match my counting to three, and you're going to try to do one complete revolution down and up in three. One, okay, well here's where we'll start. Ready, set, go. One, two, three. So Chelsea can now go one, two, three, one, two, three. And now let's see how fast you can go. One, two, three. See, you can't do it. All right, let's go back to our spots for a second. So what you have here in a high revving engine is smaller cylinders moving a shorter distance. So on, for instance, the newly introduced uh, ZX4RR, the small cylinders are already small, but they travel a very, very, very short distance. And on something like a power stroke diesel, the stroke is very long, and that goes a long way. So power stroke diesel, I don't know the exact where it revs out at, but let's call it five, maybe 6,000 RPM would be an absolute max for that kind of an engine. Whereas for something like a Kawasaki engine, you can actually have 16,000 revs and still be good. Because remember, your revolution is distance traveled, or the speed of the cylinder head is distance traveled per time. Think about kilometers per hour. So the distance that Chelsea's finger has to move over the course of time, one revolution, can happen many times. Rev RPM stands for revolutions per minute. So the fact that Chelsea can move her fingers like this, and you can't move your whole hands that quickly, is exactly why high revving engines are no less reliable than big bore, 
slow revving engines. Now the benefit of a big bore engine, something like the KLR, is a single cylinder that represents or displaces 650 cc. That engine's going to have lots of torque, whereas the higher revving engines, common in a lot of our sport bikes and basically most motorcycles overall, they are going to have a lot more horsepower than torque and they each have different characteristics. That's why there's high revving engines and lower revving engines. So hopefully now you understand the difference between a high revving engine, a low revving engine, and why sometimes your cylinders can still travel at 16,000 RPM and actually be slower than a high revving big bore engine. Hope that makes sense, and we'll talk to you in the next one.